NBC News Magazine 2020 with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. I'm Hugh Downs. And I'm Barbara Walters. And this is 2525. Tonight, retirement and how it affects you. John Stossel gives us a close up look at life in our waning years. an exclusive interview with Pope Paul, John Paul II on the place of women in today's church. A very interesting story. But first, an intriguing story about a dynamic woman. Most of you have met her, some of you know her, but all of us have been touched by this woman. Sister Kathy Quigley, who is this woman? And what makes her tick? Tonight, October 1st, 1988, she celebrates her Silver Jubilee. To us lay people, that's 25 years as a Sister of Charity. 25 years of hard work and dedication. But in order to get a better look at this woman, we've got to go back, way back in time. Well, a little further back than that. Uh, I think this is a little bit too far back now. 25 years ago, the year was 1963. Mary Poppins was the hit at the box office with Disney's amazing combination of animation and live action. Roger Rabbit was not even a dream yet. President John Kennedy was killed in Dallas. In Alabama, Governor George Wallace was fighting school integration. Pope Paul VI succeeded Pope John XXIII. And Valentina Tereshkova is the first woman in space. And Kathy Quigley entered the convent. Really, you remember where you were 25 years ago? Well, we know where some of you were, because we've been looking and checking. As for Kathy, graduation was over. It was time to move on. Well, it looks like the end of the line. Or maybe it's only the beginning. This is where it began. The Mother House at Convent Station, New Jersey. not exactly how it went. This was the postulate. This is where Kathy first left the family. Through these doors walked Kathy. And this is what we got out. The first years were years of learning. One year at the postulate. There's a lot of fellowship, a lot of friendship, and a lot of learning. And back here, we also find that Kathy began singing. Not that she hadn't done this before. Following that was the novice year. The novice year was a boot camp, and it was hard. We didn't see Kathy quite too often during these times. There's no time to smell the roses. This was serious stuff. Now, it was always very interesting at Christmas when the vow of poverty was strictly enforced. And gift giving by the young novices challenged the imagination. We were fortunate to have with us this evening Joe Quigley, Kathy's younger brother, who remembers those years well. It's good to have you with us tonight, Joe. My pleasure. What was Christmas like back then? I take it it was a little bit different. I can remember the uh, Christmas of 1964 very clearly. I was a sophomore in high school. 
the routine was we'd get up on Christmas morning, go to mass, come back, have kind of a quiet Christmas, stop my mother from crying. That's because Kathy wasn't with us. And then we'd all pack up everything, get into the car and head off to St. Elizabeth's. Mother from crying. Did she cry often? Oh no, um, only once or maybe twice. See, well then what happened? Then we would spend our one hour of allocated time visiting Kathy, and we would give her her presents from us, usually something black, stockings, uh, a new pair of gloves, um, maybe a new umbrella. It was very cheery. But her gifts to us were very interesting. Well, how do you mean? Being able to go out and shop, of course, all her gifts were made from things readily at hand, which uh, made some very interesting presents. Uh, that's when I received this. And uh, what exactly is it? At first, I didn't exactly know, but I figured it out rather quickly. It's uh, the nose warmer. What do you think? You now, isn't that amazing? Well, finally, the novice year was over and was off to Mother Xavier Jr. While here, Kathy also was completing her courses for her Bachelor of Science degree. And of course, the white veil was gone for the black one. Her first assignment, finally, after leaving College Station, was at Mary Lawn. Here she taught high school. The old Mary Lawn of the Oranges. Now, obviously, Kathy got involved in all, in all kinds of things while here, but primarily, she taught biology and she was definitely loved by all her students. Of course, some of her teaching habits were a little bit different. This is also where Kathy completed her final vows. Well, after Mary Lawn, it was time to make a slight change. And Kathy headed out to Montclair, New Jersey, to Immaculate Conception High School. Again, here she taught. And again, here she got involved in just about everything. From counseling, to plays, to singing, Kathy was in it. But can you imagine being taught by this person? I mean, she did some pretty bizarre things. Well, it wasn't long after a few years, and it was time to say goodbye to Michael Conception. Kathy was on a move. But to learn more about Kathy, we need to go back a little bit. Where was she instilled with these virtues? Where did she get her inspiration? Where did she pick up her habits? Her early years tell us a lot. Ah, yes, this was St. James School in Woodbridge, New Jersey. What a delightful little girl. Now, can you beat this for grace? I mean, isn't she an absolute beauty? Now you know where she got some of that hidden talent. Well, these were the growing up years, the formative years. Interesting. But it always seems as though she's surrounded by women. Weren't there any men in her life? Well, yes, there are. Um, it's a very good point. Primarily, there were three. Let's take a closer look. First, there was Joe Quigley. And then there was Joe Knowles, two excellent fathers. And of course, we can't forget the sweetest brother in the entire world. And then of course, there were some other men in her lives now and then. She really liked men in uniform. But there is one particular one that keeps popping up in her life. In fact, it was reported that they were seen together even this evening. Well, that's very true, Barbara. And this story goes way back. This has been a very long and lasting relationship. And we've looked into it. Mike Drury. I mean, ever since about eighth grade, it seems that he was always hanging around. But they sure kind of liked each other. And after Kathy told Mike, much to his chagrin, she was going to be a nun, he decided to become a priest. Now, can you believe it? But they still saw an awful lot of each other.
He officiated at Aaron and Chris's wedding and Caden's baptism. Who's Caden, you ask? We'll get to that later. We look closely into this one, and as far as we can tell, everything is up and up on this very long and lasting relationship. Well, enough of this clowning around. It's time for Kathy to get serious. It was also time for Kathy to make a move. After a short visit down south one summer, Kathy felt compelled to return. And so she packed up and left for Amory, Mississippi, a small rural town tucked into the northeast corner of the state. She quickly became involved as a pastoral assistant at St. Helens Church. In Amory, the spirit moved Kathy towards her music. And with the help of some of her friends in Amory and a lot of work, she produced her first tape, The Spirit Among Us. With the first tape a great success, it wasn't long before Kathy was back at work on her second tape, The Way of Peace. And when this video was made at her 25th Jubilee, she had completed her third album, The Spirit of Christmas. But perhaps more important than her music is the real work that Kathy does in Mississippi. With Sister Marie Gilligan working directly with the poor of the, this rural area. And her responsibilities cover a broad spectrum, from Meals on Wheels, food pantry for the poor, hospice and hospital visits to the Girl Scouts, teaching parenting courses, helping adolescents in traffic court. The list is endless. But let's take a look now at Amory, Mississippi, to the music of Weaving a Vision by Kathy Quigley. In the seasons of life. This is downtown Amory, Mississippi. But most of the work goes on down the rural roads, out in the poor areas. And back in 1988, we had some cutting interviews with Kathy's nieces and nephew. Here's Erin then, and now, with her husband Chris and daughter Kaden. Brian then, and now, with his wife Valerie. And Annie dancing up a storm in 1988, and most recently married to Adam. After her 25th Jubilee, Kathy returned to Amory for the next 11 years, and St. Helens Parish continued to grow both spiritually and physically. One day, the local Baptists became jealous of this and decided to haul St. Helens Church away. Well, 
Actually, the little church was busting at the seams and was no longer suitable for the growing parish. So the church was sold and moved, and along with their enthusiastic congregation, Marie and Kathy took on the task of building a new church. I am your shepherd, receive my love and When the new St. Helens was finally completed, the parish celebrated the dedication of their new church, and through countless fundraisers, sales, donations, potluck dinners, and plain hard work, were able to hand over the mortgage to the bishop, completely paid. Kathy continued writing and producing music, publishing two more tapes, The Call of the Unicorn and People of Blessing, and her first CD, journey to Bethlehem. Come, let us journey to Bethlehem, where Mary and Joseph have drawn. In 1999, after 19 wonderful, challenging years in Amory, Kathy, along with Sister Marie Gilligan, left St. Helens in Mississippi and returned to New Jersey. She spent eight years as campus minister at Mary Lawn of the Oranges, where she first began her career of service, and now has returned to Immaculate Conception High School, where she is also campus minister and teacher of music. Her days continue to be extremely busy, organizing retreats, leading special services, and maintaining her connection with the people of Amory. Kathy also enjoys her recent special mission as great aunt to Kate, now two and a half. And the newest addition to the family, Iris. And of course, Kathy continues to pursue her passion of music. And her song, Let Everything That Breathes Praise God, from the album of the same name, was chosen as the anthem for the recent celebration of the 200th anniversary of the founding of the Sisters of Charity at St. Elizabeth. So, what's next on Kathy's journey? You never know. Just have to head up that path and find out.